I'm a queen. The movie Mary of Scotland was a grand production that required a talented cast to bring the story to life. The lead role of Mary, Queen of Scots, went to Catherine Hepburn, an actress known for her intelligence and intensity. The director, John Ford, had worked with Hepburn before and admired her ability to portray complex characters. For the role of Queen Elizabeth I, the producers chose Florence Eldridge, a seasoned actress with a commanding presence. Eldridge had previously starred in historical dramas, making her a natural fit for the part. The casting process for Mary of Scotland involved auditions and chemistry tests to ensure the right actors were selected. For instance, Hepburn and Eldridge had to convey the tense relationship between their characters, who were rivals in real life. One pivotal moment in the casting process was when Hepburn and Eldridge first read their lines together. Their chemistry was undeniable, and the producers knew they had found their leads. The supporting cast was equally important, with actors like Frederick March and Douglas Walton bringing depth and nuance to their roles. March played the Earl of Bothwell, a key figure in Mary's life, while Walton portrayed Lord Darnley, Mary's second husband. In the end, the cast of Mary of Scotland was a perfect blend of talent and chemistry, creating a show that has stood the test of time. John Ford, the renowned director, brought his unique vision to Mary of Scotland in 1936. He was influenced by historical accounts of Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, and aimed to portray her life with authenticity and depth. Known for his realistic style, Ford used natural lighting and minimal set design to create a genuine atmosphere. Ford's collaboration with the cast was characterized by his emphasis on performance over technicalities. He worked closely with Catherine Hepburn, who played Mary, helping her understand the character's motivations and emotions. His direction resulted in a powerful portrayal of Mary, filled with vulnerability and strength. The film's visual style was also significant. Ford often used wide shots to emphasize the grandeur of the settings and close-ups to capture emotional intensity. He also employed tracking shots to follow actors during dialogue scenes, creating a sense of intimacy and realism. Ford's approach to directing extended beyond the camera. He believed in fostering a cooperative environment, encouraging input from his cast and crew. This collaborative spirit resulted in a harmonious production process and contributed to the film's success. In essence, Ford's directorial vision for Mary of Scotland was marked by historical accuracy, emotional depth, and visual elegance. His collaborative style and focus on performance elevated the film, making it a compelling depiction of Mary Stewart's tumultuous reign. I'm there up and you may be sorry for that time. In spite of my mistakes, I've won my people to me. You all know it. In 1936, Mary of Scotland graced the silver screen, showcasing the tumultuous life of Mary Stewart. This classic film, while not a personal inspiration, has certainly left an impression on the industry. Its ability to weave together humor, shock, and sadness in a single narrative is truly remarkable. The film's enduring qualities are many. It presents historical events in a compelling manner, making history accessible and engaging. The acting is top-notch, with Katherine Hepburn delivering a powerful performance as Mary Stewart. The film's ability to resonate with audiences, even today, is a testament to its timeless appeal. As you watch Mary of Scotland, you might find yourself reflecting on your own most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, keep watching this captivating show and see how it beautifully portrays the life of Mary Stewart. There are many surprising and emotional moments that lie ahead. You are the sole defender of our faith and these islands. What becomes of that of humanity? The 1936 film, Mary of Scotland, was a significant production in its time, known for its elaborate set design and locations. The movie depicted the life of Mary Stewart, Queen of Scots, and the challenges she faced during her reign. The set design for Mary of Scotland was a grand affair. The film's art directors, Richard Day and Joseph C. Wright, created opulent palaces and castles that accurately reflected the period's architecture and design. The interiors were adorned with intricate tapestries, luxurious fabrics, and ornate furniture, providing a visual feast for the audience. The filming locations for Mary of Scotland were equally impressive. The movie was shot in various locations, including the historic Greystone Mansion in Beverly Hills, California, which served as the exterior for Mary's palace. The film's crew also traveled to the picturesque San Jacinto Mountains in California to film the exterior shots of the Scottish Highlands. 
However, filming Mary of Scotland was not without its challenges. The production faced logistical issues, such as transporting the cast and crew to remote locations and ensuring that the set design was historically accurate. The film's crew had to conduct extensive research to ensure that the sets, costumes, and props were true to the period. Despite these challenges, Mary of Scotland was a visual masterpiece. The film's crew employed innovative techniques and technologies to create a realistic and immersive experience for the audience. For instance, they used matte paintings to create the illusion of vast landscapes and used special effects to simulate battles and other action sequences. In conclusion, the production of Mary of Scotland was a significant undertaking requiring extensive planning, research, and innovation. The film's elaborate set design, impressive locations, and logistical challenges made it a classic in the world of cinema. How vast the night is. How bright and wonderful. In the 1936 movie, Mary of Scotland, Catherine Hepburn delivers a powerful performance as the titular character. The film showcases Mary's life, from her early years as a queen of France to her eventual downfall and execution in England. Born on December 8, 1542, Mary Stuart became Queen of Scotland when she was just six days old, following the death of her father, King James V. Fee. After the death of her first husband, King Francis II of France, Mary returned to Scotland to rule her rule for native land. The movie portrays Mary as a strong and capable leader, determined to do what is best for her people. However, she faces numerous challenges and obstacles along the way, including political intrigue, religious strife, and personal betrayal. One of the key relationships in the film is Mary's friendship with her cousin, Elizabeth Fyakai of England. Despite their initial rapport, the two queens become rivals, with Elizabeth ultimately ordering Mary's execution on charges of treason. Throughout the movie, Hepburn captures Mary's complexity and resilience, delivering a nuanced and compelling performance. The film also features strong supporting performances from actors such as Frederick March, who plays the Earl of Bothwell, and Florence Eldridge, who portrays Mary's loyal servant, Jenny. Overall, Mary of Scotland is a classic historical drama that offers a fascinating look at the life and times of a remarkable woman. While it may not be as well known as some other films from the era, it is definitely worth a watch for fans of historical dramas and classic cinema. And when he returns this time, he'll carry the field in Scotland. In the 1936 movie, Mary of Scotland, Music plays a vital role in enhancing the narrative and emotional tone. The film's score was composed by Roy Webb, who also created memorable scores for other classics like Citizen Kane and The Devil Doctor. Webb's composition for Mary of Scotland is primarily orchestral, reflecting the period setting. It features strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion, which blend seamlessly to create an evocative soundscape. The music underscores key scenes, amplifying emotions without overpowering dialogues or action. One notable aspect is the love theme, a recurring melody associated with Mary Stewart's romantic relationships throughout the film. This theme is tender yet poignant, capturing the character's vulnerability and longing. Its gentle rhythm and soft instrumentation stand in stark contrast to more dramatic pieces used during moments of tension or conflict. Interestingly, Webb didn't work alone. He collaborated closely with musical director Lucien Morawieck and conductor Konstantin Bakalinikov. Their combined efforts resulted in a richly layered score that beautifully complements the storyline. On the other hand, the soundtrack includes contemporary songs chosen to resonate with audiences of the time. These popular tunes would have been familiar to cinema goers, thereby creating another layer of connection between viewers and the on-screen events. It's worth noting that while the original score remains impactful, much of it has likely been lost over time due to poor preservation methods common in early Hollywood. Fortunately, modern restorations and reconstructions based on surviving cue sheets allow us to still enjoy this classic's magnificent music today. What news from Scotland? During the Boer War, Donald Crisp met a young Winston Churchill. Later, he served in the Army Intelligence Section during the First World War. By the Second World War, Crisp rose to the rank of colonel in the United States Army Reserves. Wilfred Lucas had two children, Alice and Kirk, with Alice Louise Lucas. They were living in London when Alice Louise was granted a divorce on the grounds of desertion. Your Majesty, it is time. 
One of the most memorable scenes in Mary of Scotland takes place when Queen Mary, played by Catherine Hepburn, meets her cousin, Lord Bothwell, for the first time. As they converse, the camera focuses on their faces, highlighting the tension between them. This scene stands out due to its strong performances, particularly Hepburn's ability to convey Mary's curiosity and caution towards Bothwell. According to director John Ford, Catherine brought a certain regality and intensity to the role that made it unforgettable. Another notable scene occurs near the end of the movie, when Mary learns of her impending execution. Cinematographer Joseph August uses low-key lighting to create a somber mood, while Hepburn delivers a powerful monologue reflecting on her life and fate. This moment resonates deeply with audiences because of its emotional depth and raw honesty. Producer Pandro Berman notes, the way Catherine portrayed Mary's vulnerability and strength in the scene was truly remarkable. Finally, the climactic execution sequence leaves a lasting impression. Shot largely in close-ups, the scene captures Mary's quiet resolve and dignity amidst despair. Ford recalls, we wanted to focus on Catherine's face so that the audience could feel her emotions and understand the gravity of the situation. By emphasizing visual storytelling over dialogue, this scene cements Mary of Scotland as a classic example of golden age Hollywood cinema. In the 1936 film Mary of Scotland, Donald Crisp played a significant role. Crisp, known for his work in Greyfriars Bobby films, including Challenge to Lassie and Greyfriars Bobby The True Story of a Dog, contributed his talent to this historical drama. Alan Mowbray, another actor in Mary of Scotland, left his own legacy in the film industry. Founding the British United Services Club of Los Angeles, Mowbray demonstrated his commitment to community and camaraderie. The leading actress, Catherine Hepburn, has been recognized and appreciated by many. Natalie Merchant, in the liner notes of her album Motherland, expressed her gratitude to Hepburn. This recognition highlights Hepburn's enduring impact on the world of entertainment. Through their respective contributions, these actors have added depth and nuance to the story of Mary of Scotland, making it a classic film that continues to resonate with audiences today. Whether through community involvement or exceptional performances, each has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Released in 1936, Mary of Scotland tells the story of Mary Stewart, Queen of Scots, and her struggles against political opponents. Starring Catherine Hepburn, the movie had a significant cultural and social impact during its time. The film resonated deeply with audiences due to its compelling narrative and powerful performances. Critics praised Catherine Hepburn's portrayal of Mary, which helped establish her reputation as a leading actress. Audiences were captivated by the tragic romance between Mary and Lord Darnley, as well as the intense power dynamics depicted throughout the film. Moreover, Mary of Scotland played a role in shaping popular perceptions of historical figures like Mary Stuart. While some aspects may have been dramatized for cinematic effect, viewers came away with an image of Mary as a strong-willed yet sympathetic character. This representation likely contributed to ongoing debates surrounding Mary's life and reign. Additionally, the movie touched upon several socially relevant themes, including gender roles, religious tensions, and political intrigue. By exploring these topics through the lens of history, it invited contemporary audiences to reflect on their own societal issues. For example, discussions around women's rights might have been influenced by watching a queen battle against patriarchal structures. However, it is essential to note that historical accuracy was not the primary goal of this production. As a result, certain events and relationships were simplified or altered to fit the Hollywood mold. Nevertheless, the lasting appeal of Mary of Scotland lies in its ability to engage viewers emotionally while provoking thoughtful conversations about timeless concerns. Pull the wool over my eyes. How do you expect to fool all of Scotland? I'll take care of myself, Huntley. In 1936, Robert Warwick faced suspension from Actors' Equity due to his reluctance to join the Screen Actors Guild. That same year, he appeared in Mary of Scotland. Another actor in this classic was Frederick March, who, years later in 1955, received recognition as the best film actor by an industry survey. His competition included notable names like Marlon Brando and William Holden. Meanwhile, Bob's Watson, also a cast member in Mary of Scotland, had a significant role outside acting when he became the officiant at Ron Howard's wedding.
Mary of Scotland, a 1936 movie, received mixed reviews from critics. Some praised Catherine Hepburn's performance as Mary, Queen of Scots, while others found it less impressive. The New York Times critic, Frank Nugent, described Hepburn's portrayal as a brilliant, fiery creature, at one moment a petulant child, the next a proud and passionate woman. In contrast, Variety's review deemed her performance too modern and lacking the necessary regalness. Audiences seemed to appreciate the film more than critics. It was a box office success, with fans drawn to the dramatic story of Mary's life and the intense chemistry between Hepburn and co-star Frederick March, who played Lord Darnley. The movie was also recognized with a few award nominations. Catherine Hepburn received a nod for Best Actress at the 1937 Academy Awards, and the film was nominated for Best Original Score. Although it didn't win in these categories, the nominations themselves were a testament to the film's quality and the hard work of those involved. These accolades, along with the positive audience reception, surely brought a sense of pride and accomplishment to the cast and crew of Mary of Scotland, the film remains a classic example of historical drama, showcasing the talents of Catherine Hepburn and the enduring appeal of a well-told historical tale. Always holding counsel, eh, Notably, Frederick March starred in seven films nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture, including Mary of Scotland. His notable appearances were in Smile and Through, The Barretts of Wimpole Street, Les Miserables, Anthony Adverse. A Star is Born, One Foot in Heaven, and The Best Years of Our Lives, which was the sole winner among them. On August 31, 2021, TCM paid tribute to him by dedicating a day to his filmography during their Summer Under the Stars series, commemorating what would have been his 114th birthday. Ian Keith, another talented artist who appeared in Mary of Scotland, almost landed the lead role in Dracula after Lon Chaney's passing. Ultimately, Bella Lugosi took over due to his successful portrayal of the character on Broadway stages. Despite missing out on Dracula, Keith made significant contributions to Hollywood, making his presence felt in various productions. In the making of Mary of Scotland, the 1936 movie, Catherine Hepburn, who played the lead role, was known for her intense preparation. She studied Scottish history, and even learned to mimic the Scottish accent perfectly. However, her dedication led to some amusing moments. During the filming of a scene where she had to storm into a room, Hepburn accidentally slammed the door so hard that it broke off its hinges. This left everyone, including herself, in fits of laughter. The film's director, John Ford, was also a character on set. He had a unique way of directing, often preferring to shout instructions from a distance rather than engaging in lengthy discussions with actors. This sometimes led to humorous situations, like when he yelled at a horse during a scene, thinking it wasn't moving fast enough. Despite these light-hearted moments, the production of Mary of Scotland was not without its challenges. For instance, the film's budget was significantly higher than usual due to elaborate sets and costumes. To save money, they decided to build the sets on a nearby ranch, which presented logistical difficulties. But the crew managed to overcome these obstacles, creating a visually stunning film that has stood the test of time. Marry one and she turns to ice. <laughs> We're all out of ice. In Catherine Hepburn's memoir, Me, she shares an interesting anecdote from the filming of Mary of Scotland. The director, John Ford, lost interest in the project due to its weak plot. One day, he decided to leave early and let Hepburn direct a scene with Frederick March. Hepburn, a bit nervous, took on the challenge and directed her first and only scene. Monty Blue, who also starred in Mary of Scotland, had a challenging childhood. After his father, a Civil War veteran, passed away when Monty was eight, he and one of his brothers were sent to the Soldiers and Sailors Orphans Home in Knightstown, Indiana. His mother couldn't raise them on her own as she had four children to care for. Frederick March, another actor in Mary of Scotland, shares a unique honor with Jose Ferrer, Helen Hayes, and Ingrid Bergman. They were the first winners of Tony Awards when the annual event was established in 1947. This recognition highlights March's impressive acting skills, which he demonstrated in Mary of Scotland and many other films. I place this lady in your custody, sir. Custody. The 1936 movie Mary of Scotland has left an indelible mark on film history. This classic portrayed the life of Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, in a dramatic and captivating way. The film was a significant influence on future filmmaking, 
particularly in the genre of historical dramas. The movie's director, John Ford, was known for his meticulous attention to detail and historical accuracy. This approach was evident in Mary of Scotland, where the sets, costumes, and dialogue were all carefully crafted to create an authentic portrayal of 16th century Scotland. This commitment to historical accuracy was groundbreaking at the time and set a new standard for historical films. Mary of Scotland also featured a strong female lead, played by Catherine Hepburn, at a time when such roles were rare. Hepburn's portrayal of Mary Stewart was complex and nuanced, showcasing her strength, vulnerability, and intelligence. This representation of female power and agency was inspiring and helped pave the way for future female-led films. The film's impact can be seen in subsequent works that have been inspired by Mary of Scotland. For example, the 2018 film Mary Queen of Scots drew heavily from the 1936 movie with similar themes and character portrayals. This demonstrates the enduring influence of Mary of Scotland and its ability to resonate with audiences even today. In conclusion, Mary of Scotland has left a lasting legacy in the world of film. Its commitment to historical accuracy, strong female lead, and enduring influence have made it a classic in its own right. Why not say of this and be frank? It's all right. In the 1936 film Mary of Scotland, Catherine Hepburn developed a strong bond with her co-star, a young and talented Christopher Reeve. She grew so fond of him that she jokingly expressed her desire for him to take care of her in her retirement years. Ironically, Reeve replied, I don't think I'll live that long. Ivan F. Simpson, a supporting actor in the movie, was known for his lean build and white hair. He often portrayed characters such as servants, lawyers, doctors, and clergymen. Hepburn, who played the lead role in Mary of Scotland, was once the subject of a rumor that she suffered from Parkinson's disease. However, she clarified in a 1993 TV documentary that she did not have the disease. She explained that her shaking head was an inherited trait from her grandfather Hepburn, and that whiskey helped alleviate the shaking. She humorously added, My head just shakes, but I promise you, it ain't gonna fall off. Ruffman only meant to say... I know what Ruffman means to say. He means to say that I'm a... Transitioning from the remarkable career of Catherine Hepburn to the insights on John Carradine, it's fascinating to note Hepburn's significant impact on the casting of the movie. According to a Scott Berg's memoir, Hepburn's involvement in the film was pivotal. Hepburn's suggestion to play both Mary and Elizabeth sparked humor on set, showcasing her wit and charm. John Carradine's profile in Lawrence Raw's book adds another layer to the behind-the-scenes dynamics of this classic. Our own people? Confined like an animal? In the 1936 film, Mary of Scotland, both Frederick March and Catherine Hepburn delivered powerful performances. March, who was later scrutinized by the House Un-American Activities Committee due to suspected leftist views in 1949, actually declined the role of Willie Loman in the initial stage production of Death of a Salesman. However, he went on to play the character in the cinematic adaptation. Catherine Hepburn, known for her strong personality and remarkable acting skills, had a close relationship with Canadian portrait artist Mifanwi Pavelic. Interestingly, Pavlik passed away on a notable day, just one day before Hepburn's 100th birthday anniversary in 2007. Did you know that the 1936 movie Mary of Scotland starred Catherine Hepburn as Mary Stewart? This captivating film surely left an impression on many, but what about you? We would love to hear how this classic has touched or influenced you personally. Maybe it was the enthralling storyline set in the heart of 16th century Scotland, or perhaps Catherine Hepburn's powerful portrayal of Mary that resonated with you. Whatever it may be, we encourage you to share your stories, insights, and opinions with us. Reflect back on the moments that made you laugh, cry, or gasp while watching Mary of Scotland. How did this movie inspire or shape your appreciation for historical films? Or maybe it even sparked curiosity towards Scottish history. Let us know by commenting below. Don't forget to engage with others through liking and sharing their thoughts too. Together, let's create a vibrant community celebrating our shared passion for movies like this one. If you enjoy these discussions, consider subscribing to stay updated on future explorations into the fascinating realms of cinema. Ma'am, but I couldn't get past your jailer.